Um, well, it's a great privilege to be here. Um, so uh, thank you our brave colleagues for doing that. Um, hopefully I'll get a chance to speak to you all today. Um, I'm a great believer in quantum mechanics, so if I slip myself into lots of little pieces and rejoin again, hopefully there'll be enough time to see you all. Um, but please come and grab me. Um, this is just kind of an opinion piece, really, so I'm not going to bang on about IT uh, too much. much. Um, but there's a lot going on out there, isn't there, here, particularly in... Um, I read in a paper the other day, yes, the United Kindergarten. Not the United Kingdom, the United Kindergarten. So uh, some of you might enjoy that. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, God, it's big, this, isn't it? Um, I'm very old, um, and in fact, I am, I am. I'm 65 next month, so I'm ancient. Um, but the good news is I'm still going to carry on for a couple of years, um, mainly because I haven't, all my kids aren't off the payroll yet, and that might be something familiar for you all, yes? Um, come and talk to me about strategies to get rid of them. That would be really useful, yeah? Um, so um, I've done a lot of different things, um, and uh, it's, it's been a, a great life working startups, big companies like Barclays Bank, companies that have crashed and burned. You name it, I've done it. I've broken it, probably. Um, um, a bit of publishing world. I was the uh, uh, IT director for the Guardian Observer a long time ago. Uh, it was before internet, it was the ARPANET. And uh, we had great fun downloading kind of satellite images from NASA and so forth. And we were the first um, uh, company, first, first newspaper that actually had email letters to the editor, which was fantastic. Unfortunately, it was a bit too early because Peter Preston, who was the editor of The Guardian and Observer at the time, I went into his office and said, Peter, we can have email letters to the editor. Isn't that fantastic? He said, what's email? <laughs> uh, OK, so maybe uh, a little bit too soon. Um, so here's something for me. Who's been on the London Tube? Yes, good, good bit of interaction, excellent. Um, and 20 years ago, okay, this is what you'd see on the inside of the London, of London Tube. Um, lots and lots of graffiti. Um, but capitalism being what capitalism is, okay, it's going to make some money out of this. Yeah? Um, if people are going to be... Uh, uh, very antisocial. Let's make some money. So actually, an industry started up to make uh, a kind of graffiti kind of pens that work inside tubes and buses and all the rest of it. Bizarre, I know. And then, of course, you had Banksy, who kind of really made it into an art form. Um, and then, actually, the cleaning industry to clean up the part of capitalism that was supporting kind of vandalism. Um, and um, that's what was the sorry state of our tubes. Um, that's me drinking my cup of tea. Yeah? That's what I want to be when I grow up. Okay? I want to be grown up, have a suit and a bowler hat. But today, this is what we see. Yeah? Um, and what we see is that um, the world's changed and people are busy. The, the kids haven't got better behave. Well, mine certainly haven't. Okay? What's happened is... Okay, they're just engaged doing other things. So the world has changed. And a famous person once said, and there's a prize if you get this right, uh, the second prize is, is even better. So the first prize is a night out with me, the second prize is two nights out with me. Um, and that is, someone said that you may not be interested in strategy, but strategy is interested in you. So a lot of things happening out there Okay, that are really changing our world and, and at, at a real pace. So, so in the end, okay, London Transport, TL, uh, TFL, didn't really have to do much about making the tubes cleaner and less graffiti. The world changed and it made a different kind of engagement. So another one of my jobs, um, uh, I worked in point of sale and I made point of sale tablets and also, if you go to a BP or Shell garage, I'm to blame for pay at pump. So I leave my phone over there. I, I can't go anywhere without my phone. I have to wander around with this. Thank you. So, um, so I know a lot about fuel, uh, which is a dirty business in all sorts of ways. But if you went to any kind of garage many, many years ago, like the 
again 20 years ago. Uh, you have a convenience store where you buy pints of milk and, and all the rest of it, and buy your fuel, diesel, petrol, whatever it is, maybe even LPG. Um, but every one of them had one of these. Who recognizes, what's this? It's a car wash, yes, okay. But they've gone. And we kind of always thought, didn't we, that the world works, it's about automation, isn't it? Is that it's going to get faster, quicker, going to get rid of jobs, okay? But the world's not about automation, it's about economics, yeah? It's about money. And we know now, okay, that for all sorts of reasons, good and bad, there are no more car washes, very few. Anyone seen one recently installed? Yeah. You've seen one installed? Where? The Outer Hebrides? In Brighton, a car wash. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll give up now. So that's broken, what I was going to say. But in general, if I could generalize, yeah, I'd say that what we expected to happen in the world, which was more and more automation, didn't happen. Why? Because of the gig economy. We've got lots of poor um, workers, often from Romania, okay, who don't need to be maintained, don't need to fix when they're broken. Yeah? Uh, they turn up and they go, but there's always plenty of them. This is capitalism, how it works. Yeah? And it's much cheaper to employ these people yeah, <laughs> than it is to have a car wash. Yeah? So kind of changes how we would kind of normally think. And by the way, they clean the inside of your car, which is quite nice. Okay. Anyone with me on that? It, yeah. Bit slightly different. So here's another interesting thing. Learn and drive. Um, so I've got a car um, and um, don't use it much now though. And I'm probably going to use it a lot less because you les in I'm a Londoner means that actually if I drive, I live in Ealing, leafy suburb, but if I drive about oh, about 500 metres from where I live, I cost a little circular. And from April 2021, that's going to cost me 16 quid to do that in my Cat 4 diesel car, which I thought was a good thing to buy at the time um, uh, because, you know, the CO2 pollution and the rest of it. But I'm going to be penalised for doing that. So my kids, which I can mention again, um, one of them's got a driving licence. There's three of them. One's 29, two are 25. I've got twins, boy and girl. Um, uh, that's why I've suffered. Um, the, the interesting thing there is one of them, he's passed the test, doesn't own a car. Of course, they're Londoners. It's different than if you live in the countryside. And the other two, no interest in a car whatsoever. No. Um, and no interest in kind of the brands that go with that. Uh, looking around here, probably got lots of people that you aspire, don't we, we aspire to have an Audi. Yeah? And I, I don't know if anyone's seen the film um, uh, A Man Called Ove, Swedish film, Man Called Ove, read the book? Anyone read it? No. no. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a great, it's great. I mean, he, he's, he talks about brands, sort of Saab and Audi and things like that. And particularly he talks about, um, uh, he said, Audi he says four zeros on the bonnet, and four zeros between the ears of the people driving them. That's horrible, isn't it? Yeah. But in my kind of kids' views, the brands that we kind of respect, that's what the Uber driver drives. Yeah? They're only interested in what, how I've ruined their life by insisting they have Android phones and that iPhones. Now they've got a bit of their own income. Okay? They've got an Apple phone now. That's just really good. But so in, in, in London, Okay, about 26% less people trying to pass their test. Uh, so the world's kind of moving on in a different way. Um, Uber's changed it. We don't, we don't do this anymore, sitting around the TV watching. Maybe we'll watch Bake Off. It's good. Yeah? Do like that kind of thing together. Um, but that, the world's kind of changed where we pick and choose what kind of entertainment and media we want. Um, oh, okay. So... Another challenge for you all. Um, what do you think is the most advanced um, electronic fiscal kind of country in the world today? South Korea. South Korea. South Korea. I'd, I'd go along with that. Could be, could, could be Estonia. A lot of people say Sweden because there's only 4% of cash transactions happen in Sweden. 
Okay. China. Oh, China. Okay. Um, so, just to be difficult, I'd say it's Kenya. And he said, well, come on, Kenya, it's third world. How can that be? Well, I don't know if anyone knows about m -Pesa. Any Anyone? Yeah, m -Pesa. There's. You're a fan? Have you used it? Been out there? Uh, Fantastic. Yeah, sorry, it's a very bright light up, up there. So, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of got shielding myself. So, um, M Pesa uh, started about 25 years ago, and today 70% of all employees in Kenya of the Kenyan government get paid on their phone. And they get paid on a feature phone, not one of these things, an ordinary kind of run of the mill Nokia phone. So, what's happened there is their economy has leapfrogged. Okay, the kind of things that we've done, because we kind of work in a serial way, don't we? We've had, I don't know, we've had barter, where, you know, here's three cows for one goat, I don't know how that would work. Uh, we would have, then we said, well, it's a bit silly, we need cash, we need coins to represent that, then checks, then credit cards and the rest of it. There are people in Kenya today who've never had money, never had money in their pockets, yet their economy, they can buy fuel, uh, they, can, uh, they can actually pass their wages to relatives and friends uh, across their network. And Safari Phone, which is the third largest bank in, um, in Kenya, is actually a Vodafone subsidiary. So that world's changed. And it's kind of our thinking, like going back to the, um, the car wash, is just we think things go in a certain way. way. I mean, that's really the way the world's going. It's driven by economy. Why would they bother with kind of proper banking systems in a country like Kenya? Why would they buy, think about installed landlines? That would be crazy. So they've taken the big leap and gone for an economy, a digital economy, long before we've gone for our, I don't know, Revolut, Metro Bank apps. We've been way, way ahead of us. Um, and... and the, the Oyster card, that's, that really changed everything, I think, in the UK, because as soon as people could tap and use that, it came, became obvious that the credit card companies really wanted some of that action. And that really, I think, has changed the way we've, we've come to our kind of um, shopping in, in the UK. I mean, I often go out and I've, I don't bring my wallet with me anymore, because most transactions, sadly, when I go to the pub, Makes, this makes it way too easy to spend money and buy rounds. Um, I don't know if anyone else has that experience. Anyone not carry their wallet around with them a lot? You use the, you've got the ring. I don't even bother using the phone or the card. He's got the ring. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I only read about that the other day. Okay. My job is done. Two years? Two years. There we are. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. That's great. I'm going to have a chat with you about that. Um, so, um, I've got a, um, a, um, uh, I've got to watch the time because I'm babbling on. Uh, I've got a niece out in Nigeria and she's working for DEFRA and one of the things she's working on is, uh, you know, looking back again at those brands, at Uber and all the rest of it, um, maybe we've got to peak stuff, yeah? You know, we've, have we bought enough, yeah? How much things do we need to own anymore, yeah? I mean, it's exhausting, really, the number of things you can buy on Amazon and all the rest of it. Um, and my kids, they don't own a car. They don't want a watch, yeah? Seen anyone sort of under 30 wearing a watch? They might wear a fitness tracker, yeah? but, you know, a kind of... Uh, it's a Timex, by the way, because I'm a cheapskate and I'm old. But I can't, I can't go to that watch. My other watch broke the other day, so I had to have another watch but most people look at their phone, don't they? I mean, that's what the youth do, yeah? So, again, kind of peak stuff, things we aspire to, maybe that's gone. And I don't know if anyone aspires to a tractor here, I don't, um, but there might be a tractor. Um, um, so what they're trying to do in, in Nigeria is say, well, you know, do we really, really have to buy lots of tractors? Does every farmer have to have a tractor? No, okay, so they're trying to do peer-to-peer -peer stuff with tractors. So. Again, their kind of thinking strategy about economics means that it can be a kind of quasi-sharing economy. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. So, what do these have in common? Let's have some answers. Any idea? 
that there may be more uh, things that have in common more than... They've got that, is there not what? They've got computers in them. They have got computers in them. Very good. Very good. Yeah. They've got hacked. They've what? They've been hacked. Okay. They've been hacked. Um, okay. Well, they, they all use Linux. Um, free, open source platform. Um, that really runs the world now. Virtually every device you've got okay, runs Linux. This one doesn't. I wound it up today. Um, but if we've got Android phones, Linux. Uh, some early versions of the Sony PlayStation Linux. If you've got your Tesla, there's a brand people aspire to. Yeah? The actual platform within Tesla is Ubuntu Linux. Um, your Samsung smart TV is Linux. Uh, that's the International Space Station. They changed over to uh, Linux, I think, to Ubuntu about six years ago. And that bit barn in the middle there, that's the Microsoft Azure bit barn. And the most common operating system in a Microsoft bit barn is Ubuntu Linux. Yeah. So how can that be? Yeah. Well, again, it's about economics. Even Microsoft, okay, now they support the Linux Federation and put, pour a lot of money into it. Yeah, it's about economics. They're not kind of fighting the Windows versus other operating system world. They're saying, well, if we want to make a success of the cloud, what's the most um, popular platform for running in the cloud? It's Linux. Um, so the world has kind of turned upside down. Yeah? People are kind of seeing the obvious things, but it's all about the economics. Um, and here, here are brands that are united by FOSS. Um, anyone booked anything with Airbnb here? Airbnb person, yeah? Yeah, was it reasonably good? It's okay. It's okay. I mean, I'm not talking about your stay, but you know, you booked it, worked okay, everything else. Okay, they've been around 11 years, I can't believe it. Um, my previous job before this one, I worked in a hotels business. I worked as a GDS, that's a global distribution system. So when you book with Hotels.com, Expedia.com, and all those people who take 30% of the hotel charge, good to bring them up, actually, if you want a good price, um, you're not actually talking to the hotel, you're talking to an intermediary, which I was part of. But we found out that a third of all room bookings in the world now are Airbnb, one third. Yeah? That's massive, from 11 years. Okay. That would not be possible if they'd gone down the traditional model, which is we've got to buy a proper development platform, we've got to buy branded systems, we can't have white label um, servers and so forth. It's all Ruby on Rails, it's um, Postgres, it's Redis, uh, and that's really the entire platform. Yeah, it's a huge business, a third of all the bookings in the world. Uh, are done through them. Uh, while most of the hotel chains, everything else, are running big, big platforms built by Microsoft or Oracle. So their costs, you know, the cost per transaction, much higher on the traditional platforms. So they've leapt from nowhere to take over that part of the business. And it's only a booking system, that's all it is. Um, and uh, I was interested the other day because um, uh, Northgate, who I work for, We've got a safety side, that's uh, kind of new speak for policing systems. Uh, and we see that the French gendarmerie, they've now active Microsoft and they go all Ubuntu because it's actually, it's just a pure cost exercise. It's not that they particularly love Linux, but it can do the job for them. Um, what have we got else here? I think that's good enough. Yeah, I think that explains it all. Alibaba, NASA. Um, here's one of my favorite um, slides, and um, this is the Mars rover. Is one still going anymore? Is it all packed up now? Is one still going? I think one might still be going, just on three, three wheels or whatever. So they do the simulation and control it. Um, and so Mars rover, and up there on the right, anyone who's a Linux fan, that's Ubuntu. So um, an important platform, billions of dollars have gone into um, the actual research and so forth, but it's managed by a free system. Yeah. World turned upside down. 
Um, this is the International Space Station, um, and this is an experiment they've got. This actually is a real thing. And so this is a, uh, a floating uh, computer with AI in it. Uh, it's voice controlled, and they can push it down from astronaut, or if you've got the Russians in there, cosmonaut, from one to the other. Um, it's using open source. It's again, it's Ubuntu, it just happens to be. Um, so you see that changing, changing, changing really fast. So people just want things to work. They're not looking for a brand. They're not looking for safety. They're looking for speed. Um, don't know if, if they're actually going to develop this further, but I saw that the other day. Um, this is something we do. This is the kind of simple side of publishing. Um, uh, we we uh, do the um, speeding ticket from, it's from Northgate. Um, we run the cameras and we produce the speeding tickets to send them out to you. Very sorry about that. I've even had one myself. That's nice. Yeah, I've eaten my own dog food. Um, and I was only doing 27 miles an hour. Uh, uh, so um, the interesting thing again is that this, again, the economies of this, it's helpful for us. We make money out of it. But it's probably actually going to mean going to be less cars on the road. Yeah? So... It's, it's an interesting strategy that's changing the way we live and the way we work. Um, uh, this is something before the Houthi bombed, uh, sent over their, their, their drones into Saudi Arabia. I was trying to make something about this is the old economy, petrol, and we're all going to go for kind of electric and wind and all the rest of it. Um, and now we found out, of course, using new technology, probably again open source, the Houthis, maybe it was Iran, sent over their drones and bombed the Saudi oil uh, uh, system. Um, and which was amazing, because they got through all of those very expensive defences and the rest of it, probably with open source um, uh, drones. Um, this is interesting. Um, uh, sorry, I'm back, back to vehicles and cars again. This is um, some electric vans that are going to be made in the UK, uh, called Arrival, and Amazon put some, uh, they have some orders in for it, and DHL. And just like um, uh, there may be people here very, who like agile platforms, lean, Toyota development. Anyone with me on that? Yeah? Good, good. So uh, the, the kind of motoring manufacturing have said over the years that there must be better ways to do things. Uh, Ford would put out uh, 1,000 cars a week, I don't know, in, some, in Detroit, and then at the end of that week, okay, only 700 of them would start, so probably that wasn't very good. Toyota, okay, would produce 700 cars and 699 would start, so, okay, less waste, that's all about lean principles and so forth, but it still used the Henry Ford production line system, while these guys, again, have thought differently, yeah, they thought, do we want a production line? What about if the production line came to us? So they're going to build these vans, and they say they can scale it down and build it in a very, very small warehouse, no longer miles and miles of, of track <clears throat> on a production line. And what's happened, robots will bring everything to one place. So there's only one place to manufacture it. The robots bring them, manufacture it, and they reckon they can build these things cheaper than even Henry Ford's type of production line. Um, Who would have thought that? It's kind of reversed the ideas, but using the technology, today's technology to do that. Um, so so keep an eye on that. that. Um, okay, so this is my, was my bit about um, Saudi Arabia and the fuel, and also about um, where we're going to go with electric cars um, and how that's going to change our economy. And I see that um, uh, uh, the other day I was uh, cycling around Ealing. I try and go out at lunchtime. Uh, uh, as I'm an old guy, I've got to stay fit. And I saw someone with one of these um, cargo bikes. Anyone got a cargo bike here? No? Come on, you should invest in one, I think. They're a bit expensive, and you get an electric ones. And um, this guy had a huge, it, I passed it, it was a terrible smell. Okay, going past this cargo bike, and it was full of manure, and he had an allotment. Yeah? And there was an actual shovel in there. Okay. So I went around, I've got these loops, I came around again. And it gives this terrible smell. And again, okay, he had another load of manure. I don't know where he's got the manure. Okay, I want to find out because I've got an allotment too. Um, but, you know, it's now no longer weird. Okay, and I also see people taking their kids to school like this. 
Okay, okay, so what they do in Holland and Denmark, Germany, I was in recently, saw lots and lots of people doing this. Lots of mums taking their kids to school like that. Anyone seen Motherland recently? Seen that on TV? It's great fun. I think they're going to have a, uh, one of these in Motherland soon. Um, so, again, different trends. Um, I've got to watch the time, but I wanted to just quickly move on to something that I believe in, uh, in personally, which is the... Uh, agile, the way, agile development, and again, it's about economies of scale. It's about quick feedback. It's about, again, making sure you don't spend money on things you don't need to spend. Stopping bad project, projects early, okay? Changing direction, that horrible American word, pivot, okay? Apologies to any American friends here for using pivot, but that's kind of thing that's really, really important to us and part of the Northgate principles. And... Uh, rave principles. Uh, I particularly loved, I do a little um, course uh, and I've trained about 400 people in, in Northgate and um, the one that really scares kind of traditional people is, well the last two, customer collaboration and contract, contract negotiation, salespeople go weak at the knees, thinking what? Yeah. Uh, and responding to change over following a plan. Yeah. So um, if we look at uh, Brexit, uh, I can tell you now, there are many rivals to Northgate who are building platforms, those, right, who are building platforms right now that are negotiated with fixed contracts, fixed price scope uh, contracts that never, when Brexit, wasn't even considered. Yet it's written down on a piece of paper. Yeah? Contracts have been signed to so people delivering things that won't work post-Brexit. But, but we don't want to be trapped in that world so that's why this really gives us uh, um, uh, a, 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 reading a manifesto makes us think differently. And uh, if anyone, I, I urge anyone to read the Agile Manifesto, you can look for it online. It's very, very interesting and thought provoking. Um, so I'm going to be really quick. The last couple of things, I love this slide. Uh, it's what, again, what we try and when we work with different parts of uh, uh, of, the, of, of our company, product people, business people. Product owner wants to build the right thing, yes, okay, but the dev team, which might be me, yeah, okay, we want to build the thing right, okay, so we're not, we want to make sure that it's fit for purpose, it's scalable, and all the rest of it. Sometimes those can be a conflict. The coach is about yeah. building it fast, that's again a good piece about for, for Agile. Um, dry, don't repeat yourself, so I won't say that again. But that's an important principle for us. Um, we put in things called guerrilla teams in, uh, in um, Northgate, where we've got traditional, shall we say, legacy platforms, perhaps a little bit slow to get things done. We've built through different strategies and um, different um, patterns. Uh, we've built new teams outside of those, aided by the people inside. That's worked really well. Um, forget that, forget that, forget that. We talked about economies, uh, and I think, again, it's really important to think about why we want to do this, why we want to make the change, why these strategies are creeping up. It's all about money, and we have to watch that very carefully. So I've got about a minute to go, so I'm just going to ask you, I think I'm Eddie Mertz and Bell Burton, greatest um, people who really, really made big changes, greatest uh, athlete, uh, UK athlete ever, but no one's ever heard of her. Um, that's uh, a little bit about, yeah, look, I thought that was lovely. Um, and that, that's my last slide. Um, so I've, gonna got, I've got two minutes for questions, because you may have your own views. Yeah? You might think that's nonsense. You might think, yeah, the world is changing, and here's, here's an example. Got something for me. Come on. I'll come down and I'll stalk you. <laughs> I'm like that, but you can talk to me afterwards. Yes? A lot of stuff has been open source. Yes. There's, there's an emerging sustainability problem that we need to. Right. So, for example, some of the tooling that open source is built upon, like curl library. Curl? Those are the first. There's a single cloud and it does it in yes. the entire time. It does. So, it does. <laughs> yes. so I, think, I think while we should be able to build a lot of value on those the people who are supporting that are strong in some areas. Yeah. They, 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 uh, you're absolutely right, and it's interesting. That's a good point because um, <coughs> Google have a, a 
but a counter Chrome uh, through their Chrome browser, curl library. And uh, there are places of weakness. Uh, and I'd counter that by saying there's a uh, place of great strength where if you are a big fan of Ruby on Rails, uh, Ruby community's got about 7,000 people working on it. And the uh, line itself is about 17,000, about 500 of those. So you know, are weaknesses. And curl minus I, that's your friend, isn't it? Yes. Any others? Well, I think I've open sourced some Ruby gems and other people take them over because actually I'm not a very good programmer. So, so look, I've, I've run out of time now. So I hope that was enjoyable. Yeah, how lovely to chat to you a bit later. Be good. Thank you very much.